Welcome to the Monday, July the 1st, 2024 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. We'll let staff and members introduce themselves. Benjamin Cheney, member. Rebecca Owens, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett, member. Martha Smirsky, member. Liz Pritchett, member. At this point, we'll let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay, so for people on remotely, I'm going to share my screen. For those of you who have not done this before. And there we go. All right, so for anyone viewing tonight's uh, design review committee meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in the discussion through the Zoom platform using either video or telephone access options. Um, to use the video option, please type this link into your web browser and I'll get a notification that you want to get into the meeting. Um, alternatively, you can dial into this telephone number and plug in this meeting ID. Um, and then I will again get a notification that you want to get into the meeting and I can let you in. If anyone is having problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, please note for everyone attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. We do ask that you keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will help reduce background noise. Um, and a reminder that the Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, any substantive questions or comments about an item on the agenda, um, you need to raise your hand either physically or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. Or if you have called in, you can use star nine, and this will show a little raise hand um, for those of us on via Zoom. And then when you have been un you know, unmuted, please make sure to state your name um, clearly for the record. Um, in the event the public is unable to access today's meeting, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I will now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Unless anyone has anything else to add at this point, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move to approve the agenda. This is Martha. I'll second. Ben. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Ben. Rebecca. Stephen. Liz. Okay, we can move forward to the first application for 29 Northfield Street. Owner applicant, Brian Powell. Describe your application for us. Um, and yeah. They all have... Oh. All that stuff, and if I can share stuff on the screen, oh, if you, you want, know, me that to. would be that would be great because okay. I could point out stuff with my uh, laser pointer. Ooh, wow! It's <laughs> awesome. Can we dim the light a little bit? Um, uh, well, I can turn it off. Not only off, on or off. Oh, off is great. Off is great. Uh, just a, a couple of very quick words. I know we need to be efficient here. Um, this is an extremely strange house. The front part of it was not built there. It's probably an industrial mill building dragged up the hill. Make sure you're close to the microphone. Sorry. Don't, oh, did you touch a button? No. <laughs> Is the microphone off now? I don't know. It's good. Don't, Is it on? Yep, it's Is good. it on? Yes, it's on. I'd rather just shout, but. Well, if you want to shout, go ahead, but it, the microphone has to pick up because people outside of the room have to hear you. I see. Um, so very quickly, it, it the front part starts as another building. Somebody moves it up here, turns it into a little Greek Revival cottage. You can see the window uh, frames in the front are simple Greek Revival. It's bought by, and, and I think that's when the, the rear L is added. Rear L back, I think. Uh, yeah, rear L back here. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Waterman Wood buys it. He bought everything that came on the market adjacent to him. And he's the guy who put on the Gothic frou-frou and put on the second roof. This house, the front of it has two roofs, and that is concave. Um, let's go to the next. We're now, that's the rear L. This is my shed. And that's the tree that came up from its root ball. Let's go to the next one. And smashed my, my root frame. I obviously have to 
excuse me, I obviously have to re-roof. And one of the four things I'm bringing before you is permission to re-roof in uh, asphalt rather than the existing red cedar. Could I have the next slide? This is an undamaged part of the roof. That red cedar was put on in 1995. I first saw it in 2016 when it was 21 years old. It was already a mess. That is not yet 30 years old. When I was in preservation school as a young man, I remember being told you couldn't get good cedar anymore. And this is proof of that. Um, my friend, John Russell, who put that roof on in 1995, thought he was buying a Cadillac roof. He thought he was buying a roof that was going to last for years and years and years. He was clearly wrong. So one of the reasons I don't want to use red cedar is you can't get good red cedar. And this is how it ages. The other thing is a wooden roof is extremely flammable. You know, I might this house might as well be in the woods. And, you know, we've destabilized the climate. And when we get some warm jag, we could get fire here. And my house would be the first house in town to burn down because I would have this wooden roof close to the um close to the forest. So that's that and and do I stop her issue or how do how do you do this? Do you want him to do issue by issue or do you want him to just do the whole today? The application is not only to change the shingles, but to install the gutters downspouts as shown, uh, yes. the mm -hmm. vent plate, and two original pinnacles, yes. which you're going to restore yeah. those. So then could we have the next slide? Uh, you want me to go and, past the roof roofing? Or well, do next two slides, and we'll see the we'll see the what what this is. This is the roofing that my roofer uses. It's what they sell at RK Miles. And the color I've chosen is their lightest gray. You know, I, my hope is to squint your eyes. It'll have sort of the look of a silvered wood. Um, you know, it's squint your eyes more and it'll look more expensive like slate. Um, <laughs> keep squinting, you know. Um, so so that's my that's that's my first request. I very much do not want to re-roof in red cedar. It's dangerous and the material can't be depended on. Could I have the next slide? Um okay, we're seeing there are I, I want to put on, and I, I was given permission uh by this group some years ago to put on gutters. I didn't do that. Nobody would put gutters on my roof. The only the only guy who even proposed, and then he withdrew his proposal, wanted to nail hangers to the roof. I said, I have a wooden roof. You can't do that. So this is an opportunity for me to put on the gutters that I'd wanted to put on. This 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 house is a series of terrible decisions. The the water characteristics around this house, National Life Hill tries to drain into my cellar. Um, I could I could go on and on. It's a a, a cluster fuck if we can use that <laughs> term. Uh, it really is. Every every decision made here has been bad and what, made the drain. What of color are the gutters you're proposing? Excuse me. What color are the gutters you're proposing? Uh, a tan, something okay. that'll something yep. that'll look like my tan trim color. So I'm proposing five runs of gutters. Uh, and darn it, is this not? Well, crap. You you describe. I'm pretty good at, at moving the mouth where um, it needs to go. So I want the front and back of the shed to take the water away from the house and then be downspouts on the far end. On the uphill side, left hand in the drawing, those two roofs are at different heights. So I want gutters on both of those and downspouts. And the next slide will... Uh, give you a better idea of where. And then I also want a new gutter 
on the front porch, only there, the, the roofs are put together in such a way that without a gutter there, water pours on you as you come up my front stairs. And there was a gutter there when I, yeah, yeah, right there. There was a, there was a gutter there when I moved in. I put a gutter there. I am not asking for a downspout. I think it would look like crap. And, and it's too pretty for that. Um, so th let's go to the next slide. And this is a detail of this very difficult place. I, when I asked for gutters before, I asked for gutters on the two horizontal lengths there, yes. And, I, and I'm not asking for that now for, for two reasons. Number one, it would look like crap. Number two, there's there's no place, no way. There's a there's a deck below there. There's there's no way to have a downspout, and the water would just go right in front of my front porch and freeze. So as much as I would love a gutter there, I'm not asking for one. What I really want there, I'm not asking for it now. What I really want is a small resort roof that would deal with a series of problems the the dirt under the under the um my little deck there is lower than the surface of the driveway i mean the, the water goes into the cellar the only way to really do it would be to put a small porch ceiling there that would be easy to gutter and take out uh along the shed but i'm not asking for that now i'm just asking for those five lengths uh and let's go to the next slide and uh, oh, we missed a slide. Mm, or which one? That, that. Yeah, we were here. That, we just went past. Yeah, that. and that that's actually from the last time I was here to ask for this. And I I need to talk to the gutter guy. Nobody sees this. It can't be seen from the street, and the the neighbors barely see it from their second floor. But how? Because the rear roof is lower than the front roof. How how to how to get downspouts and how to channel the water to the front, and and that's a final decision that I'd like to make when I'm speaking with the contractor. You can see there's that that gas canister there that you know I just take it down and against the building, but but you can't do that. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm that's what I'm asking for gutters. And here. You can you can see so Thomas Waterman would put the fancy stuff on both of these houses. My house he did a lot more than the gray house. The gray house is a very simple uh, double house that Tommy Wood put frou frou in the attic story of. Both of these you can see the central post in the upper gable. They've been cut off. At, next slide, please. This is the Thomas Waterman Wood Studio, next building up. Now, you can see that that also has a pinnacle. I don't think we can trust that design. Um, this, this has all been heavily rebuilt. This, th that building was completely let go to hell. So I think probably we're seeing new wood there. And there's no way of knowing if whoever put that uh, that pinnacle on was looking at any real evidence. So uh, next slide, please. This is my this is my uh, gable face in the town, and what I'm proposing to do is to basically copy the pendant draw and use that as a pinnacle. Um, might try to make it a little more elegant, but at least it's based on something. Um, <clears throat> And I want to do it only in, the, they're only on these two places on my house. I'd like to do both of those. And I do not want to do them in wood because they will rot out again. I would like to do them in the PVC trim that they sell at Home Depot and you can tool it easily. And it can be, you know, you're not going to have end grain facing the the rain, you know, and it can be, they can be nicely cut. So I, I don't know that I mentioned, did I, I may have forgotten to put that on the application, but I, I want to do these two pinnacles in a lasting material. Uh, and the last shot, please. One second. 
And this is this again, this is when I was here before and I was asking for permission to put a stove pipe in, but it's very hard to photograph this wall. Yeah, that that upper, I, it looks like it was built by the little rascals. You know, I, I don't know why animals haven't gotten in there, um, but I want to put on just the the simple uh, the simple vent that they sell at RK Miles. Um, and that's it. Like this one, like the existing. It's yeah. the it's the one to the left there. Mm -hmm. That, but, but there's a vent here. Is that yes. what you're looking to to replicate? It the, the one that they sell at RK Miles is square. It's just it's basically that. It's a tiny bit bigger, but it's what they sell for, and and nobody except me and animals see that, uh, and falling trees, of mm -hmm. course. Yes. Um. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about the materials installation? I have a question. Okay. Uh, regarding the roof, are you assuming that these are an architectural shingle? I can't quite tell from the pattern, but they feel like they're not quite, they're clearly not a three tap, but they're sort of like. Uh, they're, I don't know. They're what they sell. Yep. Yeah. Who's your roofer? Um, Travis Cargo. Travis Cargo. Yeah. It's an architectural. Yeah. And with the name Travis Cargo, I'd give him the job if he was a stenographer. <laughs> oh. yeah. Yeah. I feel like the three tab, I mean, it's tough because it mat I mean, the three tab matches a slate roof much closer, but I realize we're talking about uh, a wooden roof, which is ra radically if different. You, yeah. If you look at the picture of the one that he circled, yeah, it shows the the texture of the shingles. Yeah, and I hear your arguments about why you want to go back, why you would like to go to a, an asphalt shingle. Uh, no, make make sure he uses make sure he uses a water and ice shield on all those valleys. Yeah. He usually does. But yeah, that's a really smart move to use that material. And the material material you're using for the trim is either called Clear, K L E E R, or Azac. Those are the, the products. The the, uh, the PVC stuff. That well, it's a it's it's a wood with a resin in it, and it it acts like wood. It you you usually drill it, but it it acts just like wood, and it'll last forever. Yeah. I do have concerns about that in an unsupported like cantilevered as a as a pinnacle that is not like adhered to a flat surface allowed to my experience is that that stuff has a lot more expansion and contraction. I've, and I've I've given a good deal of thought of <clears throat> excuse me how the how the pinnacles would be made. Yeah. We don't know yet the condition of the wood it's going to be. It it could be all rotted. Mm -hmm. So when we get a good look at it, what I would like to do, I would like to drill into it, put in some kind of, I don't know if you can get like a fiberglass rod, you know, something, something that will not rot, and I'll construct the pinnacles in a, there'll be a sandwich, probably three layers. See, I don't know the dimensions again until I get it, I, at first, I thought I'd need a sandwich of four. I'm thinking now I need a sandwich of three, and it'll be determined when I get up there with a tape measure. And either the middle piece or one of the two inner pieces, if they're four, will be cut with a big recess such that it can be lowered onto whatever the, the impervious rod is in do you do you have original pictures of the house from late eighteen hundreds? There, there are none. The earliest picture of this house, excuse me, dates to mid twentieth century. There's there's a quite old picture that shows a bit of it, but it you, you can't see that. So there's there's no good picture that shows it before the pinnacles. Brian? Yeah. Uh, Brian, hi, it's Liz. <laughs> hi, Liz. How are you? You know this house. Well, I do somewhat. I've never been inside, but it's, it's well, a wonderful you're, you're the one who gave me some great drainage information for the exterior, so. 
Okay, well, thank you. No, I was just curious. I do like the idea of putting the pinnacle there, but um, yeah, do you think there was one originally? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So you can, you can not, not only was that kind of what they did with that style, but you can you can see that they've been truncated. Okay. Um, and and again, going to the studio, and I think that's all been rebuilt. But I think what they did there with a drop and a finial is that's kind of what people did. Um, and there's if if we were to look uh, closely, there's probably a pattern book someplace in the world yeah. would yeah. you know that would that would give us a detail. But um, even even then, we wouldn't know what mine was, which is why I'm suggesting that basically I just take that draw and turn it over and it becomes a finial. Well, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. And my only comment that I'm concerned about is just its ability, that plastic material to be able to not be supported, like in a free, like when we think about that trim, it's usually nailed completely to a rigid surface yeah. behind it. And so I'm not saying don't use it. I'm just saying ask about it to make sure that it can do that. So I I, I want to rest it on a pen. I also want to, and I, I didn't go through this in that. I also want to find some kind of perforated sheet material that the world is full of. You know, maybe something similar to what people use to put trusses together and have a piece of that on either side, be a flat piece on either side, not on the front, that would stabilize it. So the thing is held by the by the pin, possibly fiberglass pin that it's on, and it's also anchored by two pieces of perforated material. <clears throat> Excuse me, it could be, you know, galvanized. I don't know what's out there. Um, but those that would be the other way that it would be held in place, because otherwise it could, you know, it would look like crap, you know, if it weren't if it weren't perfectly vertical. That's my experience: is that that plastic wood in heat and is has a way of distorting. But up there, I'm certain it's fine. I, but just and I will, as I, a will I will question before it goes up. I'll paint it with, and, and yep. seal it within an inch of its life. Yep, it's just a question. My by the way, I notice in the picture, in this particular picture here, that the ridge cap goes over top of that piece of trim. Yes. And I wonder if they redid that because of intrusion of water with that going all the way up through. If that's not flashed properly, you're going to get water behind it, which will deteriorate yeah. it again. Yeah. And and all of all of that should be taken care of by Travis's crew. He works with carpenters. They're they're the ones who are going to be rebuilding the frame of my shed. It's all yep. it's all smashed. Um, so I'll be working with the person that he works with, so it should all be meshed and okay. We'll leave it up to them to make it structurally sound and totally waterproof. <laughs> and I'd and I'd also like to turn the slope on the hill going toward town into a mortuary hillside. <laughs> <laughs> but all that will be for our next meeting. Unless anybody has any other questions or suggestions, I can go through the criteria for the project for the application. Exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Uh, the removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes, construction techniques, or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced. When the severity of deterioration requires replacement, the new feature shall be replaced in kind. Any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments such as sandblasting, shall not be approved. The application is acceptable for that criteria. 
is ex existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect to be compatible with the massing size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire code shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable. Rhythm. <clears throat> Visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows, and doors in the facade of a building shall create a rhythm. Patterns of solids and openings shall be preserved to the extent feasible, acceptable. Roof shape and equipment. Consider similarity or compatibility with roof shapes and in immediate area. Conceal rooftop equipment and features on flat roofs from eye level from adjacent public rights of way and from the ground level of any adjacent properties. Roof forms and pitch shall not be altered on the primary facade. That's acceptable. Roof drainage systems. Roof drainage systems shall not hide or obscure architectural character defining features and shall run adjacent to building corners when possible, acceptable. And lastly, windows and doors on historic structures, character defining windows and door patterns, placement sizes, proportions, and original features such as trim, sash, and moldings shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation is not possible, such character defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind. Windows and doors that are not character defining may be replaced, but such replacements must be compatible with the historic building style materials and architectural features. Acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed, speak your names. Ben. Rebecca. Stephen. Martha. Liz. So it's approved. Thank you. And five to zero in favor. Four muted. Okay. You can sign that right below my name right there. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. We can go forward to the next application for eight Richardson Street. Neil Dunlop. Hello again. <laughs> He's not going to let you sit back there. <laughs> so describe your application. Uh, we, we'd like to basically rehab the house. Uh, it, it fell into disrepair under the previous owner uh, and uh, replace windows that are uh, rotten in a lot of cases, a single pane and uh, in many cases broken. A side door that's all rusted out and actually return it you know it has aluminum frame uh storms on it now remove those because the windows will be much more efficient and return it to what it was basically when it was built in 1918 the same the same look we understand it's in the sorry is it a, um what's its historical designation i can't remember um i can't remember if this one's on the state register, national register, or both, but it's in the historic district. Which was news to me until you told me. <laughs> <laughs> but we're happy. It's why we bought the house because we, we liked its historical character. Oh, and part of that also will be there's a lot of knob and tube in the house. It's all being going to be replaced. Uh, the panel will be upgraded. Uh, there's unfortunately a cast iron. Uh, main sewer main that is deteriorated and has to be replaced so a lot of these things weren't dealt with under the previous owner where we're having to uh to do them now and you're also proposing to do some landscaping yes it was overgrown uh the the a jungle and uh and it needs to be cleaned up no trees are going to be removed in fact we're going to add 
more specimen trees that are native to Vermont or uh, des as designated by UVM extensions as being native to this area or New England. Um, but, you know, it was overgrown with weeds and shrubs and sumac and all that nasty stuff. Yeah, I saw in your application that you were anticipating doing some work on the driveway in the front walkway yeah. and a new driveway cut. Is that correct? Yes, the uh, the walkway, I'll deal with that first, cement, and uh, had a root come up underneath it. It was all cracked. Um, just the port cement walkway, which replaced it with uh, bluestone that's flat, easily shovelable, shovelable for, for water. The driveway also was not maintained and it you know, became, I don't even know what you call it, but it had two channels down the middle. It's not quite wide enough uh, for two cars and needs to be, I think it's 100 square feet need to be added to make it wide enough to fit two cars side by side. Uh, as you know, it, Richardson is very steep. Mm -hmm. So getting in and out of it is is really difficult. Maneuvering cars, people are... Actually, forgive my ignorance, Meredith. Can you pull up the Google Maps? Because I think Richardson is over on the Terra Street area behind yeah. near yeah. the State House, but yeah. I don't exactly know where you're talking about. It's San Francisco and Montpelier. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, yep, sorry. Google Maps. Or most of the windows on the house, one over one, so one, one glass over one glass. Yeah, which I do, don't believe is historic. Uh, we were going to put six over one to make it a little more in keeping. Uh, was, they, that the, was that the configuration of the original windows on the building? Uh, I don't actually. We looked for a photo. Our neighbors had a photo, but it didn't show it of their house. There's a house down actually on Terra Street. And I'm sorry, I don't know the street going north, south, up towards the park, the main street. And it has the diamond at the top, uh, which may have been a start. I haven't seen those for sale. So the windows we were using, um, you know, six over one was the closest we could come to uh, in terms of thinking of it would be, would match the start yeah, character of the house. So this is eight Richardson here. Yep. Um, so here's, right, here's the state house. Yep. No. Here's yep. Richardson. Uh, yep. I know the state. Paris. Um, and I can do this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So there's two, right, similarly designed houses right next to each other here. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the one in question. That half round window actually is just tacked to the house. It's just glass. In front of siding. Yeah. It's just tacked to the siding. Wow. Yeah. So that that's going to come off as well. Um, I went up there in the ladder, but it's put on there pretty good. You said some windows have already been replaced. Yes, right? on the south side, lower, they put uh, five windows. One, two, three, four. Yes, five windows in. Um, uh, they're actually the same ones we're going to put in, but they didn't go for any uh, grills on them, and I'm not sure why. Um, so they're one over ones? They're one over ones. And your proposed deck is on the downhill side? No, it's on the back. It's flat in the back there. Not not visible from the road? No, and we actually, no, not visible from the road. And we actually are looking at that and may only do a much smaller deck. And uh, But we figured we keep the application just if we want yeah. to Yeah, you can apply for larger and end up building smaller and that's yeah. fine. Um, and yeah, we had talked, you're not widening the curb cut here. It's widening it inside here a little bit. For the that driveway, actually right? for that, no, the curb cut will not be altered, but where right. that shrubbery is right there on the left with the overgrown stuff. Oh. Yes. Okay. So basically from the railing, if you look at the railing on the porch, mm -hmm. the left, if you're looking at this photo, it's the left, it would come out straight to the road. And that little corner of vegetation works out to be about a hundred square feet. And that will allow two cars to go in straight, oh. side by side. Okay. Well, so this is the curb, considered the curb cut. If you widen this, right? Then we would be, we would keep it level. We wouldn't yeah. actually be altering. We'll talk separately. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure we're meeting of minds on that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my, my interpretation of curb cut may be 
different things. Is that talking about an actual physical curve? It's where the pavement starts side to side. Is that why? Yeah, I forgot. I had a mouse here. I think it was a pointer. This would be the area right here. Yeah. So yeah, you add pavement to the. We'll just we'll need to coordinate on that one. So name wise, it works. I can't remember. There's so many parts to your application, but I have to actually go back and look through it all. <laughs> it, it, it started as a small job. <laughs> Cosmetic only. Was this Justice Stolen's house? No, that's the one to the north. That's one. Okay. Yes. This one belonged to Loie Morse, and okay. her husband was an artist. Andy, I can't remember. Uh, yeah. yeah. Pop cop, maybe. She passed away in March. Does anybody have any questions or comments about the windows? By the way, the Elevate is the probably one of the best windows to recreate the historic style in terms of the trim and detail of the window. And Marvin, uh, the Ultimate and the Elevate are both probably the best to replicate any of the originals. Fantastic. Yeah, so those are true divided lights. Right. Um, six over one. Even six over one. Yeah. And they're double glazed with um, a spacer bar between the glass, not just applied grills. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Unless anybody has anything else, we can go through the Criteria for the project. Exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. And removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize an historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated character-defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced. Where the severity of deterioration requires replacement, the new features shall be replaced in kind. Any treatments that cause damage shall be avoided. This is acceptable in this application. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing size scale architectural features detailing an overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. Acceptable. Proposed landscaping shall be compatible with the neighborhood and site on which a project's located. Was there any specific landscape detail or? No. Um, <clears throat> basically removal of the overgrowth and then replanting of native uh, New England. Land. Okay. That's acceptable at this location. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash, storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or, and, or adequately and appropriately screened from public view. Acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible. Acceptable. <clears throat> Respect views of the state house dome. I wasn't. <laughs> I, could, I could only grab photos of the uh, in the summer, all leafed out. So I have no idea if you can see, but I, it's just one of those things. It's close enough to the state house. I leave that one in on this one. <laughs> what is that? So there's when, in general, if you're building up near the state house, you have to respect views of the state house dome. So anytime that there's an application really close to the state house. I leave that criteria in for them to weigh in on. You're not making anything taller. So. <laughs> Can you see it from your house? No. I think you crane, you crane your, <laughs> you crane your head. <laughs> Number 10, rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors in the facade of a building shall create a rhythm Patterns of solids and openings shall be preserved to the extent feasible, acceptable in the in this application. Do we miss nine? 
I'm sorry. Did you miss nine? And yes, proportion. Compatibility of a relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width, the height of windows and doors, acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building should be considered in any alteration of a building. Architectural features on an addition shall not duplicate, but shall respect the original historic building's architectural features. Acceptable roof drainage systems shall not hide or obscure architectural character defining features and shall run adjacent to building corners when possible. Are there any gutters proposed or drainage? Oh, yeah, we did, we weren't, but what we found out on Saturday, the foundation is being deteriorated because there's no gutters on the on the south side. It's, okay, there's a ditch there, and um, to avoid further deterioration, we're going to run. Gutters on that side. Okay, acceptable. <laughs> Landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Projects within the design review district and subject to the landscaping requirements shall consider the following. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, and other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards. Does landscaping obscure or undermine key architectural patterns or elements on historic buildings? Mechanical equipment screening. For historic structures existing, historic and contributing resources, such as street trees, fences, gates, walls, steps, gazebos, walkways, front and side yard pattern shall be retained or restored when impacted by the alteration of a building. Walls and fences shall be compatible with the site and the building in scale, traditional materials and design that reflect the period of the building and or is compatible with the surrounding context acceptable. Windows and doors on historic structures, character defining windows and door patterns, placement sizes, proportions, and original features, such as trim, sash, and molding, shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation is not possible, such character defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind. Windows and doors that are not character defining may be replaced, but such replacements must be compatible with the historic building style, materials, and architectural features acceptable. Porches and stairs on historic structures. The location of porches, ramps, and stairs shall be placed in a manner that does not impact or undermine the original and significant ornamentation or detailing of the existing building. Stairs, ramps, and porches shall employ a suitable detailing to connect and be compatible with the historic and important design features of existing buildings and new construction. Stairs and ramps shall be designed in a manner with details and materials that provide the most sensitive and compatible structure and that fits the building design and layout acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Ben. Rebecca. Stephen. Martha, I say yes. Liz, yes. Okay, five to zero in favor. And I'll have one of you come up and sign this form. Right below my name there. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Good Thank luck you. with your project. Thank you. <clears throat> the next application for One Bailey Avenue, Thomas Richards. Applicant Michelle DeLong, review new signs. Uh, so we've got Natalie on remotely for this. Natalie, you can unmute yourself. Okay, I'm here. Um, Okay, for this location, so this is an existing um, New England Federal Credit Union location, and they are rebranding to um, East Rise Credit Union. And for this location, we are, if you continue to scroll, um, the first sign on there will just be the freestanding sign. We will reface that and then just, yeah, and then just paint the cabinet. That one I think we were okay with upon initial review. Um, and yep. then sign two will be, um, we're gonna take down the existing letters, put up new ones. They will be non-illuminated aluminum um, stud mounted letters. Um, we'll do that for sign two and sign three. 
but sign four is the one that will be different. So for that, that sign, we're going to take down those existing letters and we're going to put up a painted um, backer panel that has le um, new letters on that. Uh, the reasoning why we're doing that is because um, we're going to take down these letters. There's going to be small holes left over from where um, the existing letters were mounted. Um, it's typically pretty difficult to patch and um, touch those up to be able to perfectly match the brick so it may not look as nice. The backer will be able to cover up that area. Um, and because it'll be painted blue and there will be white letters, it'll pop a little bit more. Um, and you'll be able to see it a little bit better from the road. Um, the existing letters are... Sorry. Do you want me to go to the detail on that number four? Yes, please. Um, so the existing sign area is 5.9 square feet. Um, this new that we're proposing now is going to be 9.5. Um, the other reasoning for that as well is that we're going to have a logo, like a that, that bird... Um, sunrise logo that they didn't have previously um, so that copy itself is actually smaller than the existing but when we add in the logo um, that kind of bumps us over the top and then that's it <laughs> sorry what was that the logo brings in color that people yes. did not have yep yep so i can scroll back up so the, you know, the the other signs that the the look is definitely changing. Um, for for sign purposes, for me, these are the same area of the sign. So there's not a whole lot that can come into play for design review about you know what their logo changes, things like that. Um, but the that one is definitely getting bigger and is a different style of sign of attaching to the building. The last, the last page of your applications has a, a schematically and it says proposed new credit union. <laughs> it's an old site plan. It's the old site plan. Okay, we're not they talking just, about- No, no I right? needed, for my permit, I needed a site plan because there's a ground mounted sign involved. Oh. So they dug, no, there's no new credit union. Okay. <laughs> this is just something I needed to have for my file. <laughs> That's what I kind of thought. But... Yep, yep. Um, so I have a question. <clears throat> this is Liz. Uh, <clears throat> in a couple of areas, it looks like you're taking off the letters, the individual letters, and putting new individual letters in, in the brick. And won't there be holes? Um, you know, what are you going to do? Well, it seems like there's, right, there are going to be holes where the new, the yeah, remains. They yeah, there will be holes left over, so we'll have to patch them and repair them, make it, because um, it's like more of a stucco finish. It's going to be easier for us to have like a wall remediation company go in behind it and make it a smooth finish, whereas brick is a lot harder to do that for. Yeah, I couldn't remember if that was stone or what. So, okay, so it's stucco. Thank you. That should be fine. Does anybody else have any other questions, comments, or suggestions? If not, we can go through the criteria sheet for signs in the design district. The size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review district shall be compatible with the building and structures of the site and surrounding properties acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures acceptable. It is recommended the sign placement be centered over building entries acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials on the building acceptable. In masonry buildings, fasteners shall be in the mortar joints or in the stucco, as in this case, acceptable. Sign, design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves acceptable. And all in favor of the application as presented, speak your names. Ben. Rebecca. Stephen. 
Um, I'm going to abstain. As as Meredith pointed out, we really don't get to comment on color, but I find it a bit um, too much. So I'm abstaining. Okay. Um, this is Liz. Yes. Okay. So it's approved four to one in oh, favor. Four, four, to four to zero. zero. To one. <laughs> Four to zero to one, and one abstain. Okay. And you can explain what she needs to do as far as. Uh, yeah. So, um, be Natalie, because um, there weren't any sort of recommendations or optional changes, I'm probably just going to issue this one um, straight up because, you know, we usually have people sign for it, but your remote um i will get that as soon as i can because well you're not changing where the grandma to sign is so i don't have to do a, a, a lot after this so I'll, I'll get that out to you in the next couple of days if i can before the fourth of july holiday um and am we mailing that or is someone local going to pick it up the permit um we can have you mail it to our office I, or i can send you a fedex label whatever's whatever's easiest Okay, just there's a, a notice card that needs to be posted on the site for the appeal period. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember. I don't have my application package in front of me where the office location is. Um, I it's so. Do you need it now, or do you, well, I can email well, it to you? We'll email separately. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And we can move to the next application for 203 Berry Street. Owner applicant, Frank Saliani. Describe your application for us. Uh, we are replacing the Berry Street market sign uh, with a uh, greenhouse pottery sign. We are using the frame of the existing projecting sign that's there and just replacing the Lexan with a new graphic and new tweet. Right, that sign does not light up, is that correct? It does, it's an illuminated yes. sign. Will it continue to light up? Yeah, we will um, replace the fluorescents that are in it with LEDs, but I will never be there late. <laughs> the idea it's funny looking at the application it says that it can't be on after 11 yeah. but the idea of me being there see, till 11 is like laughable <laughs> um it'll i think it'll be nice during the winter time though to be able to have it on you know at three o'clock in the afternoon three o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't start and i like the idea of maintaining this piece of what was there which was the very street market was the old sign internally lit? Yeah. Yeah. And what is the lighting for the new sign? Uh, the old sign, I think, was um, fluorescent. And the new sign will probably be LED. Inside. 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 Yeah. And that's normally isn't something we allow for new signs, but because it's this existing frame, mm -hmm. they're allowed to do repairs to it. Okay. Um, and changing the and changing the what, panel is definitely allowed. What is the panels. what is the material of the panel? Uh, it's a material called Lexan. Okay. It's like a, a more durable, sturdy form of plexiglass. So that allows the light inside to come through to yeah. illuminate it. It's from what John explains to me. It's back painted, so all the paint is on the interior of it. Mm -hmm. It'll still be translucent. It'll be translucent. And there will be white paint on the inside of it, and the outside would be... It will be white translucent panel with black paint. So I that... don't know the particulars <laughs> of, like, how this type of sign is actually fabricated, um, whether it's painted white and black. Um yeah. But the intent is that light will pass through it. Yeah. So when you do at four o'clock in winter and you turn it on, it'll, it'll, it'll be back. So basically the black is painted. So what you're seeing on the outside is basically a silhouette 
of whatever is painted black, and then the light comes through the translucent portion around it. That's right. It's actually a nice looking sign. Mm -hmm. Looks a whole lot better than the Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I designed it so that it mimics the pattern of the Pepsi sign. Yeah. So instead of saying Pepsi, there's a teapot. In. So that that kind of carries over through from the original. Mm -hmm. And then there's a Coca-Cola sign, Ferry Street Market Coca-Cola sign on the side of the building facing mm -hmm. um, down street property that, that that we left off and continued to stick. Mm -hmm. What would you think about painting the like gold, goldish, grassy kind of trim around it? Maybe, uh, maybe would, a black. I would like to paint it black, but... I didn't know if that was something that you guys would want. Or... That would be preferable. Oh, you mean like through the middle? No, the metal. Oh, the, the metal that's there. The keep that gold. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that would that would clean up the whole sign and make it read way yeah. more. I wasn't sure. Uh, how no, that would look. That I would look so. much better. It in, would look. In, in terms of framing the sign. Just yeah, do it in black. The same cool. black that you're using and the detail in the sign. The lettering. I'll have to talk to John about the right paint. Like, how do you go about? Because I'm I'm pretty sure that that's um, anodized aluminum. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's painted gold. I think it's anodized gold. Um, if there's a paint that adheres to aluminum well, that's not going to flake off. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, if you can take is is it physically possible to take that off? Do you know? Yep. Oh, okay. I think that could come out. Yeah. Cool. Right now, the way that that sign is, those um, two panels are vacuum forms, so they're actually dimensional. Yeah. Yeah, they pop, yeah. Yeah. And from what I understand, from what John said, this pan will come out a little bit so that it locks into that frame, but there won't be two mm -hmm. separate vacuum forms. Forms that they um, fabricate. Yeah, is that a, that adds costs? It's twice as many forms. Yeah, I'm gonna guess they did. It, Pepsi did originally. They're like, hey, we'll give you a sign. More than half of it's our logo. Yeah, and so the bottom probably. Yeah, they probably went over everywhere. For, yeah, I'm sure this is not the only sign like that. <laughs> I'm sure, there are like plenty of them. Yeah. If you start looking for them, you'll probably find them everywhere. Yeah. Any other comments, questions, or suggestions? And again, I can go through the signs criteria. Size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exter exterior signs within the design review district shall be compatible with the buildings and structures of the site and surrounding properties acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures acceptable in this location. If a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency in placement and size among all signs acceptable it is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries acceptable here and sign design color and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings acceptable all in favor of the application speak your names ben. rebecca stephen martha i say yes Liz, yes. It is five to nothing in favor. Did you want to break down the option about painting the trim area? Yes. Right? Okay, that'd be great. There's an optional change. The outer sign frame may be painted a black color. Compatible with the black sign detail coloring. That's 
Okay. And I can get you to come up and sign the application. And just right below my name right there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Nice. Me too. And we're down to four Langdon Street. Just come up and describe your application. I'm Joe Boss, Crease Churchill. So we just learned today uh, that our proposed site is unacceptable. The parking places we are proposing is on the Langdon Street Bridge. Meredith sent us an email this morning saying for floodplain reasons, that's not going to work. Um, I was hoping Corey would be here tonight. We have a couple other proposed locations for this is a parklet application. Um, I'm going to have to resubmit the design because the other two locations are not going to work for the structure that I was proposing because there's no room for a handicap ramp. So our preferred location, um, I don't, Carice just sent you an email. Here. Yep. Um, I, just, just so you know, if you talk about the design details with them as best you can, yep. like some of if some of those things carry over, because they're not going to have a say on like the handicapped ramp right. angle, stuff like I that, right? Yeah, so you might not have to come back mm -hmm. here. Gotcha. That's, I'm so let me, yeah. Yeah. Let me cross I'll that, that bridge. Stuff. Next. Yep. Let me pull up those emails and get the pictures. Just so I can picture it, where are the other two um, locations that you're looking so, at? So um, we have two parking spaces on Elm Street, yeah. basically yeah. right yeah. against Four Langdon Street. Mm -hmm. And what we would be, this is not our preferred location because the visibility from inside the building is not as good. Mm -hmm. um, our, and I think, unfortunately, Corey is going to tell me I'm not allowed to have one right here, but... I did some measuring this afternoon. So this loading zone striping at a triangular yep. is just off the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, if we went from the end of the bridge abutment, you can see the crack in the sidewalk there, mm -hmm. to the end of that point, eight feet wide. Uh, not the curb point, the point oh, on here. white markings, right? Yep. So that would place it in front where we had good visibility of it. Mm -hmm. It would be eight by 19 feet which is slightly smaller than a parking space. That would be our preferred location. And I could, you know, Corey has the say in that. Okay. I thought he was going to be here yeah. tonight. Well, it helps. Um, the it helps second me. location you can kind of see in the background of this would be around the corner. Mm -hmm. We would actually take the second parking spot from the corner of Langdon and Elm because we have a back door there that is close to our kitchen and rear bar. So it'd be a better serving point for us. But we're going to, um switch this to just one parking space so we'd be looking at roughly eight by 20. um originally the stuff i submitted was two parking spaces on the bridge but now that we're going to revise the whole plan we're going to shrink it down to one parking space and make it smaller okay for this um, purpose so the design that i had come up with <clears throat> that i submitted originally is because aaron our other partner and myself are both He's an artist and I'm a steel fabricator and I have a big trailer frame that we want to build a cool looking thing for Langdon Street. Um, but it's going to be, it's not going to be feasible on Elm Street because we would need a handicap ramp because of the height of that deck and the sidewalk's just not big enough over there. So our new proposal would be just a straight up wood frame deck that's the same height as the curb that's flush walk on with like three railings around it okay. um just straight access from the, and then it would be um i think we'd probably just do loose tables and chairs because it's a much smaller space this is more a question from america what are uh i don't have a clue what we're talking about as far as like even in these drawings, as far as like uh, 
how the design that we're looking at here yep. and what our uh, requirements are for uh, detail of drawings to be yeah. able to make decisions about. Yeah, and this is, I mean, and I think because that's it's different the, for a parklet than it is. For yeah, a and and it's the the parklet aspect. You know, it needs to go through design review um, through the ordinance, but it's not getting a zoning permit for design review. Um, you know, I, I'm doing the best I can. If you well, guys, you know, feel like you don't you don't have enough information, you can ask for more. Well, I, um, a lot of this because it's a yeah because it's a simpler for this one because it was a simpler design. But I do have like when it comes to the lighting, um, I in that email that I just got there was some you know, sense of the type of lighting, it was going to be, you know, sort of your, your standard sort of outdoor sort of cafe lighting situation. Um, yeah. but yeah, no, I, it's, I don't want to be an impediment to a business yeah. that's trying hard to do I know. things in downtown. I also don't want to approve things that I don't really have a good sense of what they are in an effort to be able to be fair to the next applicant. Yeah. And in this, I can't, really re i don't know what color the sunshade is i don't know i don't know what these railings look like i don't even really have dimensions here i don't know what this i don't i don't know what this is telling me um and so i would love i'm happy to hear that you may need to come back for other reasons because i don't want to ask you to come back for well reasons, this whole but... that's why i said in the beginning that yeah. this whole design is like scrap it's gonna yeah be well that's that size it's yeah. gonna be a traditional pressure treated wood frame deck right. with railings around it right um like i said i mean aaron being a sculptor and me being a welder and me having this trailer frame that was going to be a kind of a i didn't put a lot of detail in because we haven't started building it yet we were kind of hoping to like be able to put the flare into it as we went so yeah. we had some ideas but i mean i know you as a professional person that does great things i know carice runs an, an excellent establishment i know aaron does really nice art all those things i know and believe in as an individual that has to make a decision about right uh yeah understood and i thought i mean it's hard for me to we just didn't nail down like the exact design and spacing of yeah it. we had a general idea and i'm glad we didn't spend more time because now we're scrapping so. right <laughs> yeah and i'm sorry yeah, about that oh no that's I mean, we're just happy that we didn't start welding yeah yeah i just <laughs> i i Go ahead. Mm -hmm. my, my question is more what are the requirements for the part that what do we have to make the railing out of or what does it need to look like or are there are there special the the, the requirements are the michelle savory you know how okay. far apart the spindles have to be how high the railing has to be those are the requirements design review but it doesn't matter what what it's color chair we use because it's i mean the, it's so close to the ground that obviously for public safety, uh, if, if you're high enough above the ground, components of a, of a railing system should be, you know, no more than four inches of space. But I'm not sure that would be required here. But no, I think it's only- I've already addressed that with the, Michelle. Yeah, so, that was detailed all that out. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's, that's it's fine. Not, but we're still gonna wanna have a railing around three sides. And yes a rail cap that'll be essentially a you know like a drink rail and a, a yep. lean in at 42 inch rail height yeah the only consideration uh for railings uh like on a parklet like that or if you have families you don't want an open space where some little kid's gonna crawl through out into track <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good you, consideration you <laughs> right so either whether you have a bench or Right. An interior some sort of railing system. From... I mean, if you do something artistic on the outside, you may want to think about doing something inside again, just to. So a question for you guys, because if we, I mean, depending on what Corey says about the location and stuff, how much detail, I mean, do I have to like get this railing, the look of it and everything exactly? Just the sketch. The concept. The concept, concept sketch. The, the sketch. Okay. But I would like something that like, has a little bit more detail in it. I don't believe this railing could be could be built that I'm seeing right here that is just a pencil line. So like that actually was going to be one by one tube steel because right. this thing so, is all steel. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, but and I don't know if we'll go metal with the rail system on the platform. Sure. We lean towards metal, so to make something cool and artistic, that yeah. squiggly line yeah. is like yeah. I don't need to know where the squiggle goes. 
Got to be rebar welded sure. to the outside. But if that if piece. that tells me that this is an artistic bent rebar thing, that's great. Okay. And gotcha. then just a little bit more sort of like detail. We're talking one by one square tube that's like yeah. attached here. You know, it just gives and like what's the elevation of the sunshade? Because like I don't believe this sun sunshade can actually be held up the way it's drawn here. That like there's nothing that's You'd gonna be surprised. Aaron, Aaron's got some translucent hoops that are made out of galvanized steel that were going to be incorporated sure. in the brackets at the top of the steel. But that's, what, but, but that's what I need to know because I don't believe this drawing is, would do that. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure anything big and metal up overhead, you double check with Michelle. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, we're um, not actually depending on the location. I mean, yeah. It's going to be different, but we probably will still. In a perfect world, if Corey let us put it on Langdon in front, um, yeah. we're probably going to want a sunshade because that side gets beat with sun. Yeah. But I'll go with something more traditional that's not. Yeah. There you run into a little bit more of the the sight lines mm -hmm. of people trying to come out at Langdon. That's all. Well, but that's it should thing. be set back, though. That's, there. It would be. I don't back. know if you have the ability to make it. So I took some measurements. They're still. Let me look at my notes. But if you can pass that off to um, Corey for me. Um, so that space I was proposing to the end. Oh, of, you want me to type this while you're reading? Well, I'm explaining it. Oh, you. okay. <laughs> so if he'd let us go over that triangular white striping on Langdon Street by chance. So you're basically going to go from the edge of the bridge all the way out to where the to curve the starts. To the point of curve. where... Mm -hmm. onto elm street um no, oh, it's, oh, mm -mm, no so in that no. picture um no, she had a, there's back. a triangular no loading zone demarcation right yes. in front of langdon see it right there yes so i'd basically cover that up but it wouldn't be a triangular parklet it would be rectangular yes and then there's still this um, here there's 20 feet remaining from the end of that to the beginning of the crosswalk Yep. Mm -hmm. And then these were the notes. I mean, what's, I can email what's that. that dis to what's that distance from, say, that seam at the bridge out to there? It would be 43 feet to the end of the triangle from the uh, crack in the curb there at the end yes. of the bridge. That's 19 feet. So we would construct it essentially to there. That leaves. 20 feet to the beginning of the crosswalk, 26 feet to Elm Street. So, okay. Um, that'd be 39 feet to the beginning of the crosswalk or 45 to the actual curb on Elm. What's the width of the sidewalk <laughs> there in front of the. So, at the uphill side, I don't know which direction that oh. is. <laughs> that's eight feet wide at the corner of the building right there. And then it's um, just shy of 10 feet wide at the downhill corner of the building. Mm -hmm. It gets a little, the sidewalk gets a little wider because the building is not parallel to the street. So, so does the street. Get yes. Yeah. It gets a little wider. As yeah. And that's the other, the I did measure. So if we put the proposed eight foot wide parklet over that white triangle, there's still 26 feet of width remaining to the curb on the other side of the street and being a one-way street and yeah unless the truck comes through there sideways that should be enough <laughs> and these all seem more like public works questions yeah they are but i, I definitely I, agree with me and i think you're in the world where you can i mean i read through your thing of trying to keep it low to get out of all of those spindles and all of that stuff that michelle wants well um, it's really the handicap ramp becomes the problem right and I mean, even in this case here, that's hard to see in this picture, but there's a fair amount of slope to Langdon yeah. Street oh, yeah. and that bridge to the corner. And Michelle just informed me a couple of days ago that I got to have that platform on that level. So yeah. the longer we make it, the higher it is and the right. handicap or any yeah. problem we have. So yeah. Um, yeah. that's why switching the design to something that goes on the street where you can yeah. get a wheelchair right on it is yeah. like, just 
got to give up our hopes and dreams for the cool artistic trailer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, you can weld up a pretty nice frame that you could yeah. you know, drag on there. And I, right. think, it, I, think, I think it would be a really... I think what we'll do when I resubmit the design, see what Corey says, would be we would probably want to do a cool decorative steel railing system yeah. with a wood deck yeah. close to the ground. Sounds great. I love it. I just want to see the details a little bit more. I know. I hear you. <laughs> I'm an engineer. I'm not an architect, right. so it's hard for me. <laughs> Would the sunshade just be permanently attached to the length of that? That's what, yeah. So the sunshade material, I mean, mm -hmm. before we, I was going to bring in a detail of that from the internet. As basically, we were proposing like a, it's greenhouse sunshade that just comes on a roll. You can get it in whatever width you want. And they're mm -hmm. like those shade sails is kind of like a translucent material yes. you can get them in all different colors yeah um, sort of like what's on the three penny one yeah i think they yeah. have a tan one we were I looking at red oh, okay we we're looking at possibly white or tan somewhere in that region i don't want the sunshade to be hot because it's going to be close to the customers but it'll also like make a, a really beautiful gray shade that goes really nicely with black framing mm-hmm and actually, if you look at Julio's just installed an operable shade, and they have a railing across the top, and the shade mounts there just like a sh an in shade for an interior window. Yeah, but it's retractable. made for exterior, and it's that same material. You can see through it, but it breaks the sun. Mm -hmm. And the one that they have, you can lower it halfway or all the way, or on a gray day, you just leave it up. Yep. But the wind will be able to pass through it. Yes. We won't have to be thinking about it, the wind load on it as right. much. Yeah, that's what those are designed for. So it just kind of breaks up the direct sunlight. Yep. yep. Um, to the point of the sun heat, heat, hitting this, um, will the top rail, like where you lean or or put your drinks or things like that, would that be not metal? It's because I feel like it gets really hot probably yeah, actually I, yeah. I think we were kind of planning on doing like a wood with an yeah. epoxy on it for, okay yeah uh, that'd be great for the top surfaces yeah we also have to be cognizant of we can't have anything shiny out there because it gets so sunny in the afternoon that it'll blind you yeah yeah i know i'm in the i avoid the sun camp so <laughs> i think about it <laughs> Thank you, you can actually use five quarter decking makes a nice rail yeah i'm not a big fan of pressure treated for finish. That's what the five quarter decking that I had in the drawings is what we were going to do for the deck. I was going to do some, I actually just sawed up some cherry and ash that I happen to have in my possession that might have been just something a little nicer looking than PT. We actually did some PT on a deck and we did some railings and we used a Jacobian stain, which is a really dark. Uh, sort of a blackish color. Yeah. Uh, and it came out, it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so, so I guess we wait. Here we go. Here. They're coming back um, with more details. So we moved yeah. to table this okay. for. First, I'll talk to Corey and see what he has to say. I mean, I've, I've emailed Corey, copied Michelle, just to sort of throw out the idea. You guys are copied so that we can just continue that conversation so, about the location. I don't know if this is the right venue, but I mean, if Corey rejects this idea of out front, is there any reason we, why we couldn't have one of the spaces on Elm Street? That's uh, we'll just, we'll, we'll come up with a, a, a different location. And I think it's, you guys want to see more detail on the we, eventual we, design. On the structure. We don't sell. As long as somebody approves where you can put it, I mean, just come up, you know, a, a detailed design of the thing, yeah. how it's going to look, et cetera. And then wherever you want to drag the thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you guys don't you, care they, where. Yeah. You can they, that's it. Cool. That's yeah. all for you. For them, it's where, the location. where you're allowed to put it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have no say on where to put it and just okay. what it looks oh, like. Oh, that's why I said and, I wasn't sure if this yep. was the right place to ask the question or not. And I think okay. with the, when it comes to like the actual tables and chairs on there, as long as it's a you know general sense of. Yeah, I don't care stuff. much about. Yeah, yep. tables and chairs get that. And I mean, you know, the we get flooded again. Is, hopefully yeah. every, hopefully the whole main structure is fine. You may have to replace the tables and chairs. We're not going to make you come back because, you know, some of your chairs got damaged or something and you need new chairs. You got eight feet to work with, so 
basically you got bistro tables that right it's compact a chair is fit people. yeah <laughs> okay so we'll yeah. wait to hear from there's the yep i've emailed yeah. him on that and copied michelle and the there is a july 15th meeting so let's Try we'll, we'll work together you know i'm i'm not in on thursday and friday but if we can get a location for you so that you get your measurements yep right yep I'll, and I'll then start working on design there and yeah like, start working on design for that size um so it's the 15th so i really if you know you're coming back so you guys have an idea of the concept. If the materials don't actually yes. get posted on the internet, yep. you're okay as long as I email them around. So yep. I would have to have things no later than the morning of the 15th so that I can email it to everybody. Okay. Yeah, um, I think we can come up with it. Okay. As long as you guys don't pin me, I don't have to be pinned down to the exact yep. design of everything. I'll explain. Uh, Just need a little more information. Right. I'll explain the materials and how we're going to, what we're going to build it out of. Them. Yes. Awesome. Excellent. So, Thank do we need to uh, make a motion to table it's, or just? It's not an them. actual okay. like permit, permit. Okay. Through through me. Um, is there any chance you guys can postpone the minutes to the next meeting? Because I've got to set up for DRB that's supposed to start in like eight minutes. Either that or does anybody have any question about questions. the minutes? I make a motion to accept the minutes the way they were written. Paperwork? No. Okay. Just redo the design. <laughs> So Martha made a motion to accept the minutes. Okay. We hear a second. A second. Rebecca All in second. favor of the minutes, speak your names. Rebecca. Ben. Steve. Martha. Minutes are approved. <laughs> and I'll be out of town on the 15th. Sorry. Okay. So Ben, you're you're in town on the 15th? I'm in town on the 15th. Okay. So you will be chairing on the 15th. Do I actually still have Liz? Yes, I have Liz. Hi, Liz. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Awesome. Uh, okay, great. Yeah, so next meeting, July 15th. There's no meeting, August 5th. Uh, adjournment. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. This is All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Rebecca. Martha. Who is? Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>